Welcome back to the Engadget stage at CES 2019. Um, we are here. I am Jessica Condit. I'm a senior editor at Engadget.com. And with me is James Shields with Xbox. Yep. Um, so we're going to be talking about the Xbox Adaptive Controller. Uh, and this thing is super cool. It came out last year, and it's a gamepad built specifically for people with disabilities. Uh, it works with a ton of existing um, homemade kind of tools that people with disabilities use to play games all the time. How did this start? So let's let's start with the why. Yeah. Right? So um, if we think about Microsoft's mission, it's to empower everybody around the world to do more and achieve more. And um, Xbox being a subset of Microsoft, uh, when, when we think about what that mission means to us is we want everybody to be able to play games regardless of their skill level and regardless of their physical ability. So um, we've been making controllers for over 15 years now. Uh, we hear a lot of good feedback from our fans that they like the controller design, but it doesn't work for everyone. Uh, there are certain assumptions that we had in mind when we created our traditional controller. We assumed people would have two hands. Mm -hmm. We assumed they would have all their fingers and thumbs. We assumed they had the strength to hold the yeah. controller for a long period of time. So we knew we needed to do something to address that. And that's where uh, the idea for the adaptive controller came from. And we've now, we announced it back in May last year. It launched in September last year. And it is a controller designed for gamers with limited mobility. Every year, Microsoft has these hackathons. And at the hackathons, you're encouraged to go and work on something that you're passionate about, but it might not be your day job. So there was one small team, it was about four or five people, and they thought, hey, we really want to like, create or do something to the Xbox controller to enable more people to play easily. So uh, they started working on a prototype um, back in 2015. It looked totally different to this. Yeah. And they actually gathered a lot of internal support working on that prototype. And then a year later, in 2016, that team had gathered even more people to work on it. They wanted to do a, a second iteration of it based off of that feedback that they heard. And at that point, that's when you know, the team of Xbox started to recognize it and say, hey, this is extremely important. Uh, we should be making this into um, a real project you know, that we're selling on shelves. It shouldn't just be a, a prototype. And uh, around about 2016, 2017, um, we got the green light to turn it into a full program. And that means we had the full backing of you know, the engineering team, the testing team, the marketing team, the PR team. And we all rallied around it to, um, to turn it into the product that you see today. One of the cool things about the gamepad itself is, I mean, how much it looks like an Xbox product. You know, it doesn't look like, I'm sure, the first iteration that happened, but it doesn't look like a controller made for people with disabilities. It just looks like a really sleek uh, product. As we were um, building it, we kept getting continuous feedback from the community right. telling us you know, what the features should be, what it should look like, yeah. how the packaging should work. We heard um, from the community, hey, we don't want this to look like a different product. It shouldn't, it shouldn't look like something that's on its own outside of the Xbox ecosystem. This is the Xbox Adaptive Controller. Uh, when you see it, I mean, the first thing your eyes get drawn to are typically these yeah. two large buttons on the front. So they are buttons. Um, not touchpads. They're not, not touchpads, yeah, right. they're not dials or anything. They're just large buttons, but they're super easy to press. You can even slide your hand over the top of it in order to actuate them. And we even see some gamers who rest their hand here and kind of tilt it back yeah. and forth. So by default, they're A and B. You can remap them to be whatever you want them to be. It's You're, all completely remappable, right? That's like, right. Totally. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. You also have other system commands on the front, you know, the D-pad, view and menu, Xbox button, and a profile switch. Um, and all this stuff on the front, by itself, that gives you enough input to navigate the console and play simple games yeah. straight out the box. But the real magic of it is on the back of the device here. Yeah. There's 19 of these 3.5 millimeter jack ports, and they all translate into a function on the Xbox, mm -hmm. like the A button, the B button, right trigger, left bumper. And what this enables people to do is they can take other devices, let's say 
this one here, uh, this is a foot pedal, for example. You can take the foot pedal, you can plug it into the back of the device, and you can choose what you want that to act as. Right. If you want it to be the fire button in games, you plug it into right trigger. If you want it to be the jump button in games, plug it into A. And it enables people to use all these different types of devices. This is another one, it's just a, another button that you can plug in. And then there's this one here, which is a, a one-handed joystick from PDP, which also has a couple of buttons up top. It enables you to plug in these devices, whichever ones work for you, into the back of this controller to create that custom setup. A lot of people with disabilities are basically making things at home uh, and, and putting them together a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, but these jacks are like the standard, right? That's right. Yeah. We didn't want to target specific disabilities because there's so many different situations yeah. out there with different disabilities. People play in different ways. They play different games. So the goal was to, one of the goals, was to make sure that this works with the widest array of devices possible. Yeah. And a lot of the um, people who would use this device, they have these devices in their house already. They might use them for playing on their iPhone or their iPad. They might use them for turning on lights. Yeah. They might use them for opening doors. And we wanted to make sure this controller worked with all those devices that they already have, uh, hence all the ports on the back. And then the price point is also pretty important on this thing. It's $100 which, I mean, in the world of game controllers, that's a fairly, that's a standard price. It's a little more than like an Elite or something, but it's not out of range for most people. Yeah, right. so the price of controllers varies. You know, yeah, the standard yeah. nowadays is about $60 for your right. traditional controller. Our Elite controller is 150 and then you even get controllers that are more expensive. Um, with this, we wanted to make sure that it was affordable. Accessibility is very important for Microsoft. It's very important for Xbox as well. And over time, you can actually see more and more accessibility features being added. We've had things like uh, Narrator and Magnifier for a while. We added things like Copilot, which enables two controllers to play together as one. Um, we added things like button remapping on traditional controllers that everybody has. And then, you know, now we have the Xbox Adaptive Controller. Um, it's not going to stop. We're going to continue to add more accessibility features in the future. Have you heard any cool stories about people using it in weird ways or unexpected ways? These two brothers kind of grew up gaming together their whole life. Um, ever since they were very, very young, they were always gaming. They were playing against each other. They were playing with each other cooperatively. Um, but then, unfortunately, one day they actually had a, a car accident. One of the brothers was paralyzed um, throughout his whole body, and the other brother was, was fine. And unfortunately, they ended up drifting apart because they didn't have that kind of gaming bond. Working with Craig Hospital in Denver, um, and as part of the beta program, they introduced this, and they actually got uh, the brother up and running with the Xbox Adaptive Controller. The other brother would use a traditional controller, and they would be playing Copilot together. And now, you know, with that feature and with the Adaptive Controller, um, we've heard from them that you know their bond is extremely strong again. They're continuing to game. There's no real gap in skill um, that I that I saw when I saw the demos at the at the Redmond campus. It was really precise. The internals of it is still an Xbox wireless controller. Yeah. It just looks different. What do you think this piece of hardware means for the video game market overall? I mean, is this maybe the first step toward just more inclusion in that area in general? The video game market overall, like more and more things have been added in yeah. terms of accessibility as time goes on. For us at Xbox, this was the first time that we had built a piece of hardware that was built from the ground up specifically for gamers with limited mobility. Speaking you know, on behalf of Xbox, so we would love to see accessibility become more prominent and you know, more, um, get more support as time goes on. So that community engagement has been really important throughout this process, right? Yes. Just really talking with people that are going to use this controller all the time. Ever since we started this, that, that internal team at the hackathon, they were engaging with the community. When it became an official program at Microsoft, we continued to engage with the community. And now it's out. We're hearing more feedback, and we're hearing the stories. Uh, and we want to continue to engage with the community to hear like what else can awesome. we do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm interested to see just where this goes in the future. Um, I mean, for people with disabilities, but also just for the tinkering market. I mean, people just see a new gadget and they want to you know, open it up and see what, what they can do with it. The next evolution of the gamepad. Here it is, yeah. That's right.
Very cool. All right, well, thank you very much for talking with me and showing off the Xbox Adaptive Controller. Uh, that was it from us for the stage. Uh, we're going to be back on Engadget.com with more from CES 2019. Thank <laughs> you.